Hey guys, how you doing? I'm Hex. Hello there, and this is the the, the Twitch the Twitch website. You may you may have seen this website before, um, but today I'm going to talk about a better way of using Twitch and why I don't use the Twitch website. Um, this isn't the first video on this topic I've actually made. It's probably like the third, but I feel like it keeps something that keeps coming back. People keep asking about it and keep mentioning it, and then they don't know. So I think maybe it's time to make like revisit this and make another video. Uh, Twitch website has got some serious limitations. Um, not so much in the layout, because the layout of the website's actually okay. It's fairly usable. But the player itself um, is, in theory, HTML5, but some people have reported that they sometimes get uh, still get the Flash version load up, as well as the actual controls for the uh, for the video. Oh, there we go. I'm clicking on it. And now it's going somewhere else entirely. God damn it. Uh, okay, so... Uh, the problem, the limitations is uh, with this is a lot of people get the loading and the buffering icon endlessly, even on a great connection. And then when they go into options, they have to mess about with source, medium to low um, to get it working. And then like the HTML5 thing doesn't work properly. And there's lots of like problems all linked to the actual player. Now, in fairness to Twitch, they have a lot of people banging on their servers and they do seem to be trying to make it better for everyone. They do appear to be working on it. But to be honest, I think there's a better solution out there. Uh, there's been a few better solutions. Gnome Twitch is one that commonly people know, but that's again, has a few problems where it doesn't quite load the page right sometimes, it doesn't quite load the video right, sometimes chat fails, and I found a more elegant solution. The solution I have found is uh, this program here, live streamer Twitch GUI. And again, I've spoken about this before, so it's not news to a lot of you guys that follow the channel for a while. Um, and there's the same video we've just watched, and it was a featured video on Twitch. Only when I click on this video, it's going to, there you go, it's going to launch MPV in my case and a program called Chatty. Minimize itself. Right now, and launch I like on. that. There Pause that so I'm not deafening everyone. Uh, so there is MPV being launched. Uh, and I think I've got my, I think I, yeah, I have actually currently got my uh, Twitch stream at a not auto load Chatty because a lot of the time I don't want to take part in chat. But uh, with one button there, poof, just click that little chat button and minimize that program again. It should any second. There we go. Oh, thank God. It come on a different monitor. I thought it was going to make me look a fool then. <laughs> it's going to make me look like a fool. Um, so there's my video. So I'll put that there. That's on the wrong monitor now. I'll put my video there. And there's Chatty. Um, now, Chatty, I'm not going to lie. Chatty is an ugly, ugly program. It is hideous. But it's also miraculously, wonderfully featured and fully set. It's, it's definitely something that's worth using. Uh, because it can do things like if I click on a user here, if I click on this user here, it pops up and shows me all the messages. That's probably a, that's probably not a good one because that person's only sent one message. There you go. Shows you all the uh, the messages the, the 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 user has sent. And if you happen to be a moderator on the channel, you can ban, unban, or give people a timeout, etc. As well as if you have channel options, you can go view and you can go oh sorry view and channel admin. And this isn't my channel. But if it was my channel, I could update all the stuff here and hit update. So even as a creator, as someone who wants to stream, you don't actually have to visit the Twitch website. You can do all from inside Chatty. Uh, so Chatty is a program I really like, and it does manage many, many users really well. It's just a simple Java application, and it's, it's I think, the best thing out there. I'd love to see something that looks prettier, but unfortunately, it, it is what it is, and it, it's so functional, I can't not use it. Now, MPV for video playback uh, allows you to pause the stream using and the resume fact the stream without seeing the they know that someone from KT has to respond to the super uh, It doesn't have any quality options, but all that's set through chat uh, through the MP uh, the live stream application. Forget to speak again today. And uh, generally, yeah, this is this is this is how I watch Twitch all the time. To get out I of hand and get another turn at that. What the is the next objective here video. for MVP? Will they go for the Baron? Now. And, uh, the big wave and bottom has been video. cleaned up, but there is and a super minion on that next one that's in video. the main base. Different pages. Mid lane is absolutely on different, on different terrible right now for MVP. It like a, should you know, probably look to fix that computer. before having any sort of a team fight. You can use the live stream application so it does seem like it's going to fix itself thanks to the turret. But in the case of the all inclusive experience that live stream offers, I find it's actually worth using it all together. Let's go back there. And also, once you've logged into the application, you can look at live streams that will show you people you follow that are currently live. Um, and you, you can get notifications and stuff pop up there as well and generally have a nicer experience. So you just leave this open, leave it minimized like this, and then you'll get a pop-up 
if there is uh, anyone streaming that you follow. Yeah, I think you can also minimize it to the system tray as well, notification area. And in options here, we've got options to choose a light and dark theme, uh, which obviously I choose the dark one because, you know, look, look who I am. Yeah, dark everything. Uh, smooth scroll is nice as well. It doesn't make a massive difference, but it works nice enough. Streams, there we go. Here's the quality setting. We can select the preferred quality. Obviously, the preferred quality is source, and you can change your presets if you're not happy with them, which gives you a lot of, lot of functionality. Stream link. Now, this is based on stream link. Uh, you can also use live stream if you want, but that's now defunct. I don't think people are updating live stream anymore. But stream link is the command line application that works behind the scenes on this. Uh, you, it's got all the options here to tweak and change. But honestly, you don't need to. Player, you can select VLC or MPV. Um, I personally prefer MPV. I find it works slightly better. I'm not a fan of VLC. I find that it has locked up on me enough times that I thought I'll just use MPV that's never locked up on me. Uh, Again, if you nothing wrong with uh, with VLC though, if you like that, use that definitely. I also like the minimal interface of MPV. It doesn't show me anything I don't need to see. I like that too. But yeah, we've got layout, don't show window decorations, and all the usual stuff you would like to customize your player. Chat, obviously, just chatty. Now, how do you get all this wondrous stuff set up? Well, that's where it seems quite complicated, but it's really, really not complicated. Um, First thing you need to get uh, from the AUR, if you're on an Arch-based distro, if you just install um, Streamlink Twitch GUI, it'll pull in everything you need apart from Chatty. Uh, just just install that Streamlink dash Twitch dash GUI, and then get Chatty separately, which is literally just Chatty. The package name is just Chatty. But if you're on another distro, uh, let's have a look, shall we? Because I'm not on another distro, so I can't really say. So starting with the first one, we've got um, we've got uh, Streamlink itself, which is a but ugly website. I mean, given given the design thought that's gone into the uh, the actual application and how well it is, this is stream link is is not great. Um, oh, this is the, oh, this is the command line thing. Yeah, that's why. That's where I'm getting confused. This is the command line bit, which now the website makes more sense. Good work, Hex. Um, so stream link is the command line application that you run in the background. Uh, you can get this. Let's see if it's got installation. There you go. Yeah, installation. Arch. There you go. <laughs> Yay. Really? It's packing you are? Okay, okay, should okay, fair enough. Assuming you've got that handler installed, that is. Fedora, Gen 2, NetBSD, uh, Nix OS, Solus, Ubuntu, Void, uh, other platforms also available for Microsoft Windows, weirdly. Uh, but yeah, all it seems like they've covered the major distros there, so you just install Streamlink, which is the command line application. And then as for the GUI, which is the larger component, uh, which is this bit we're actually looking at here, uh, you can go on their uh, GitHub page. Uh, yeah, look, GitHub page. GitHub page always look ugly. So you're like, oh, what's that? And you scroll, they're like, oh, there's the website, which is nice and easy to look at. And it should have installation. You know, download. Uh, does it? Oh, packages. Directly download applications for the GitHub release page. Yay. So, uh, yeah, it's, it looks like it's just fairly easy to download and build uh, stuff there. But there is an AUR package, obviously, like I've said. So you just need Streamlink, Streamlink Twitch GUI, and then Chatty. Chatty is a Java application. Just download it, put it somewhere, and run it. That's it. So there's nothing else you need to actually worry about with Chatty. Download and run. There's the uh, the light colors. So it is out of the box. I tweak mine to be darker. There you go. There's the dark version. Yay. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, I've now. That's straightforward. Again, I mean, really, it's three applications, and two of which they're just so they're just ridiculously easy. It's just getting the actual. The actual stream link to which GUI installed, which is the problem. Again, AUR package, AUR's got you back. It's all there as usual. Now, when it comes to usability of these things, a lot of people are always saying things like, how usable is it long term? Will it get updates? Now I've been using I've been using Stream Link Twitch GUI for well since it came out, literally. Before that I used live streamer Twitch GUI, which was the version of the same application before they switched over to Streamlink as the recommended back end. And uh, I have never had a problem with this. There was a time when uh, they changed their terms on Twitch, so you had to log in. So they added a mandatory login thing on the application, and that gave me a downtime of all of about a day. And even then, it wasn't, I probably could have sorted it quicker if I never had just Googled the problem. Um, this, is, this is a solid application. I use it 
every day. And as I've said, as a content creator and as someone who streams, I do not visit the Twitch website. I use OBS to tell if my stream is live. I can just look on OBS and it'll give me relevant information which I can interpret. I know my stream's live or not. And then I use chat uh, through Twitter, through Chatty. Uh, I don't ever have to look at the Twitch website. And again, for playback as well, and I watch a fair bit of Twitch, I never have to look at that. I've got very used to the way it's laid out on the side here, and I've never had a problem with the application. The only thing you may come to when you set it up is you might find that it won't find Chatty if it's not installed as global application. But you can also use Chromium Chrome custom application. You can also supply a path to Chatty if it's in a non-standard location, which has solved the problem for me in the past when I've come across that because I was just downloading Chatty instead of using the AUR, AUR version. Um, so yeah, if Chatty doesn't launch for whatever reason, this is it. And uh, just tick the box to automatically open chat if that's what you want. Personally, I don't do that because a lot of the time I just want the stream open. It's only when friends are streaming I really get involved in chat and you know that way I'll be opening chatty separately anyway. And then as for the stream link, if stream link's installed on your system, there is no reason this won't work out of the box as standard flawlessly. But, and as uh, this has been pointed out to me recently, if, uh, if oh, there we go, featured. Uh, if I hit a play on a stream, it gives me information right here. Right here, it gives me information and minimizes itself. I think a win else. over KT uh, will help. Pause. There we go. Let's minimize that guy out of the way. Now you can see in chatty here, it gave you, just here, it gave you a list of what was happening. It gave you a breakdown of exactly what was happening. Um, and from that, you could have, if it had a fail, it would have said failed at this point. So you can easily find out where it fails if you're setting it up for the first time. And you shouldn't, you shouldn't have any problems, really. Uh, and you've got all these options here, which is chat. Uh, oh, there you go. There was a like there. and There's a few other little interactive things you can click while the stream is active. But you see how nicely it detects when the application closes and just carries on. There's no reason whatsoever you'll have a problem with this. But yeah, I wanted to do as, as I wanted to give I wanted to give uh, a a decent amount of information on this and to really sort of show it because I feel like the last videos I did on it didn't really get the message across. So I've taken a bit more time with this one. So I have gone on for 12 minutes. I'm sorry about that, guys. But yeah, hopefully you guys will see the benefit of using a separate player over the website. Um, and trust me, when it comes to stability, I've had a web browser crash on me that's taken down my stream, whereas I do not get that when I'm watching through MPV and through Streamlink Twitch GUI. It is a mouthful, though. They really need to change that name. Streamlink Twitch GUI. I mean, like, can it not just be called Twitch GUI or or or, or Twitch interface or something? It just they seem to have a lot of words on that. And of course, uh, there are solutions where you can watch more than just Twitch. Uh, there are other things out there like uh, like 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 Beam, and there are other streaming services which Hitbox. There you go. That's what I was thinking of. Uh, there are other solutions out there, and uh, Streamlink will play those solutions as a command line application if you want to get into that. But for just watching Twitch, which is between Twitch and YouTube. I don't really have a need for any other like user-generated content. There's the two places I go, and I've never had a problem. So there are other solutions, as I said, but this is the one I use at the moment. There is all, there was also a um, a plugin for GNOME, which gave you a little drop down, which was really great, and I did a video on that a while back. But that doesn't seem to work anymore. That just seems to be broken. So if someone wants to pick that project up, please do. You go because that'd be great. But uh, this is what I'm using at the moment. So thank you very much for watching. I've been HexDSL. Goodbye. Thought I'd add a little bit at the end, just for pseudo shred, you know it is.